Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial number 4, we talk about the specific behavior of the UI in respect to control inputs. Most of you guys will use a joystick with spring and the center position because you fly airplanes or you don't know it better. So first let's center my controls because I use a specific helicopter setup. If your pedals have a spring, center them as well. Remove it if possible or untighten it as much as possible. The center of gravity in the UI is in front of the rotor mast. So we can adjust our joystick in accordance, moving it a little bit back and press the trim button. So your center joystick equals a slightly aft cyclic in a hover. It is hard to see, but the rotor mast is tilted about one degree to the left. The purpose of this tilt is to counteract the tail rotor thrust, which pushes the halo to the right. Anyway, you have to counteract this right drifting tendency on your joystick as well. So in addition to the aft movement, let's move him a little bit to the left and again press the trim button. So when the hand of the joystick your control indicator in the upper left should show a slightly aft and left cyclic input. This is about your setting for a hover and only the smallest inputs may be required to hold the helicopter on that place. We already discussed the torque produced by the main rotor and his increase when pulling the collective in the last video. So we apply left pedal to counteract torque and hold the direction in which the nose of the aircraft is pointing. Increases in collective and torque requires left pedal, decrease requires the right pedal. When in a hover, the pilot not only maintains heading by controlling the tail rotor, he has full control of the yaw axis and may turn the helicopter in any direction he wants. Therefore, to overcome torque, in a left turn, more power is needed, while while turning to the right, torque is doing the job, and less power is required. In real life, if the situation permits, and especially under windy conditions, pedal turn should be always be performed against the torque, to the left in that case. It's much safer because to stop an initiated pedal turn requires less power. On the other hand, a right pedal turn, supported and possibly accelerated by wind, may be impossible to stop because of a lack of engine power. When using VR, it may be easier to maintain stationary hover while performing pedal turns because of the much better 3D experience. So if you don't use VR like I, Fast pedal turns and in narrow spaces can be an even more significant challenge. So let's go back to the ground and start from the beginning. First we center our cyclic stick and then move him to the determined hover position while applying some left pedal. When taking off by pulling collective only small corrections on the cyclic and the pedals needed. Applying gently forward cyclic to make the UE move in that direction. Part of the lift created transforms into thrust and the UE settles a little bit because less lift is available. If you accelerate slowly, this is not a big deal. If you do it fast, you have to apply more collective to maintain altitude. When starting to move forward, the UE begins shaking due to the transverse flow effect. In this video, we do not discuss aerodynamics in detail but the transverse flow effect increases rotor effectiveness and pushes the aircraft to the right. When catching about 50 knots, translational lift improves the rotor efficiency even more. Less power may be needed or the rate of climb increases in accordance. Also, above about 40 knots, the airflow around the fuselage has a stabilizing effect to the yaw axis and less pe left pedal and therefore less power is required. Some right pedal will be needed because in forwarding flight at about 65 knots, because of the higher efficiency, less power is required than in a hover. Less torque needs to be neutralized. When reducing airspeed, the opposite effect took place. More power is needed, therefore more left pedal and, accordingly, more power. Controlling a helicopter at low speeds is a never-ending story of control inputs induced by each other. Let's take off a little bit faster and climb to a traffic pedal altitude. 
The following is specific to the UE in its extremes. Other helicopters may have a similar behavior, but not to that extent. For gazelle pilots, the following is worthless, because the gazelle reacts absolute different. Basically, forward speed is controlled over the cyclic, while the collective controls attitude, rate of climb or descent. The amount of necessary pedal input needed in forwarding flight may be not 100% correct simulated, but it is sufficient in my view. If you like to climb in the UE by raising the collective and therefore increasing lift, the aircraft also reacts with a nose up maneuver which increases the rate of climb even more but also decreases airspeed. Again level off and we return to 80 knots. If you try to descend by simply lowering the collective, the same happens in the opposite direction. The UE will take the nose down and start a dive. So if you like to climb without changing your airspeed, you need to apply forward cyclic while pulling the collective. When descending, you need to apply aft cyclic to maintain your altitude while lowering the collective. This extreme reaction is a characteristic of the old rotor system with the stabilizer bar. Anytime initiating a climb or descent using collective, you have to correct with the cyclic stick, maintaining the attitude of the aircraft. Anytime when flying turns, additional lift created by the main rotor is transformed into a side rod acting thrust, limited the total amount of lift produced and the aircraft begins to descend. As higher the bank rate, as higher the rate of descending. Keeping altitude in turn requires more lift, so you have to pull more collective during the turn. When leveling off, you have to lower the collective again, otherwise a climb will be initiated. Same thing in the opposite direction. If you like to stay at the same altitude during a turn, you need to apply more collective to increase lift. Hard to explain what is necessary if you like to climb or descend during a turn. In the description below you find the link to a training mission and the related video. Maneuvering at low speeds requires constant changes in all three control inputs. So airspeed is your friend, even in a helicopter. Knowledge about helicopter physics is essential when it comes to initial flight training because it can explain why things don't work out in the first place. But when it comes to actual flying, you should not overthink about this theoretical stuff. Just fly the aircraft. During my time as a flight instructor, I met basically two types of pilots. The ones, they after hundreds of hours still maneuver the aircraft. And the others, they move their asses and the aircraft is just an extension of their body. Especially when it comes to low level flying, you better be one of the second group. Because there is no time to think about other things beside your intentions. So let's go back to the airport for landing. Because in the UE everything interacts so extensively with each other, you should plan everything in advance and make only slight changes. Also keep your airspeed as long as practicable. Together both keeps your system stable. Reduce altitude and airspeed slowly on a constant rate and keep in mind while translating from high airspeed to medium airspeed at around 65 knots, less power is required. But if you got below 40 knots, more power is needed to get even slower. 300 to 500 feet descent during approach is a good reference. As long as you are faster than 50 knots, higher rates of descent are not a problem as long as you have sufficient altitude. 
Below 40 knots, 300 feet will be fine and you should not exceed 500 feet as a maximum rate of descent. During the last phase of the approach when reducing airspeed to zero, losing translational lift and getting on the backside of the transverse flow effect, you need to be focused on the pedals as well. The Yuri rotor system produces a big amount of drag, constantly torque at a time and your aircraft yours to the right. Many corrections needed to on cyclic and collective. This leads to many changes in torque and the aircraft's nose is swinging left and right. This is also good to see in many many Yui movies where it looks like the pilot is sleeping and don't getting attention to the aircraft's nose. While in fact he is very busy on the pedals fighting constant changes in torque. In our next movie we talk about how to start and land safe with less or no helicopter experience at all. Thank you for watching it. Please support this channel and subscribe and like the video. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always happy landings and see you next time.